internal perspective, then you can get through anything that's fine. It's much smaller of a trial in front of you if you know that for eternity you're going to have one of the copies. Right. Okay. Can I put you on the spot, Becca? What, how has, when's the, when is the time that having a perspective has helped you to do that? Oh, so many times. Um, on my mission, okay. especially, like, there's days that you just, like, want to give up and okay. just go back to bed. Um, but the eternal perspective and knowing the value of the gospel in my life and how it can bless other people, then you can, you know, keep going and okay. push through the hard times because you know there's a miracle on the other side yeah. because of that eternal perspective. You know that the Lord's going to bless you. Love it. Love it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Here then, here. Go ahead. So, uh, so let's go. Let's go, Violet. It's fine. It's fine. Abby's got her hand. And then Abby. <laughs> All right. So, uh, uh, oh my gosh, no? Janelle, geez, sorry. Uh, and then so, Abby. I'll do Chris Dockerson. Uh huh. Um, talked about being one with Christ, and he says, um, when we, when we put on Christ or become one with Christ. It becomes possible to either resolve or set aside differences, disagreements, and disputes. Um, so, okay. yeah. So what? So to 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 help us not be troubled today, what is he saying we need to do? Yeah, but I, but by extension of that, he, in, he's handing out. We got to what? You you one with others? Yes. You have to be one with those around us. How hard is that today? <laughs> Listen, I, I guarantee I get I guarantee I guarantee you this this is the biggest challenge of our day right now is that for us to for us to have unity with Christ, it's gonna be it's it's gonna be a, in direct proportion to how we have unity with others. And listen, in having unity with others isn't necessarily a hard thing. But to have unity with others that think differently than we do, and to be able to have differences of opinions and differences of of belief, but to still love them as Heavenly Father loves them, how hard is that? It's very hard. It's it's very difficult. That's not. I mean, but. Listen, that's that's what we're asked to do, right? And that takes a big change within us to do that. And it's listen, it, it you just don't flip a switch and you do it. I mean, this is a this is as you're driving down the highway, and there's probably no more easier place to get upset with people and have mean thoughts about people than when you're in the car driving. It, but it's but it starts somewhere, and you just got to. I know, I know. Yeah, I mean, so, but how do we? What is? What are our thoughts? And that becomes the, that becomes the control. You know, the the determinant, the determiner of where am I at with? If we're truly going to survive troubling times, it's going to take, it's going to take changes in our in our attitudes and, you know, to be able to have disagreements and be it, but still. Love God, people as God loves them, and I'll tell you what: we live in a time where that is. We don't see we don't see great examples of that. And uh, but did you find that, that general conference talk from a couple? It was a couple of, of general conferences ago, where they were I can't even remember who was talking about. But he was saying that in the Book of Mormon, after after Christ came to visit, and after there there was peace for. How long was that? 100 years, 400 years? 400 years, all in the fourth defect. Yeah. But he's sitting that I don't think they were all of the same opinion at the time. They probably had different different outlooks on things. They, they were still peace. They still got along with each other. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the, there was no contention among them. Does not mean there was no differences in their in what they right. what they believed, right? Yeah. And that's where we that's where we need to get to. I, I mean, and <laughs> I mean, they have differences of opinions on things, right? They have differences of opinions. There's, yeah, yeah, right. 
Well, they're, they're 12 type A personalities. They're reds, right? With opinions, with different backgrounds. And so, and, the, it, and, and everything moves forward with, they have to be totally 100% anonymous on. So I think to think that, hey, every, but they come to agreements on things. Yeah, so I love that. Still Abby, you. you're up. Sister. Thank you. I was just going to say that I um, chose President Nelson's talk about peacemakers, which I <laughs> thought was very fitting, um, considering what you were just talking about. But um, it says, you know, you have uh, your agency to choose contention or reconciliation. And I urge you, you to choose to be a peacemaker now and always. And I thought um, the quote from his talk that stood out to me was actually his story about, you know, when he was um, in his internship and was, you know, this uh, surgeon in the middle of a surgery just erupted in anger and started yelling and even threw a scalpel and stuff. And it's, um, I mean, you, you wouldn't, a lot of people wouldn't expect that reaction necessarily from a surgeon and in that situation but the thing is is that no matter uh what your job is you're still a person so and um my mom she worked in the medical field for a long time and she saw that you know um there were some doctors who were really good with their patients but weren't good with their coworkers, and there were others who were really good with their coworkers, but not great at their bedside manner. And so it's something that really stuck with me that you have to, it's not like you use up all your energy to be nice to certain people. You have to use all your energy towards being nice to everyone. Like right. controlling your anger because it's really self-control. It's like, you know what? Um, I don't think of myself as a patient person, but my mom thinks I'm patient, but I, um, I feel impatient and I feel frustrated, but I just choose not to act on it. And that's why she thinks I'm patient, but I'm like, no, I'm burning up inside. Like I just, but, um, it's really important. The choices we make, we may feel one way, but it's choosing to, um, take a deep breath, take a step back realize that you know just because someone is saying something you don't agree with doesn't mean that you need to speak up right that moment like yeah sometimes you need to speak up but sometimes you can just sit there and listen and it's okay because sometimes you just need to hear their perspective and if you say anything it will become a fight no matter what your intentions are and it's just right. realizing that um, everyone has an active part in keeping peace. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I think there's something about, and I love how you say that, how we react is a choice, mm -hmm. right? How we respond is a choice. Listening and choosing to listen and choosing to understand a person that may think different than we do or has a different opinion, that's a choice to mm -hmm. listen and try to understand why they I don't think it's, I don't, I think sometimes you think, hey, people are evil if they don't think like me. And, you know, sometimes just listening, go, hey, I, I, I see your perspective on, on that. I, I understand that. And they may not see that, you know, and they may not see, you know, how I see things. And, you know, it's just coming together. But I think sometimes it just starts with a few people. I say, listen, I understand what I see. I, I, I can see your, your point and why you, why you, why you believe that. Mm -hmm. And that's not, that's not a bad thing. I think generally people are good. They want to be good. They, people want to be happy and they see it. They see the road to that in different ways. Right. So Abby, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Very good. Uh, I was going to say, yes. Um, I really, really actually really love um, Elder Gone. Oh talking, yeah. 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 Talking about ministry. And I think in troubled times, we feel better by serving. Mm -hmm. Our people are in the world, and that's like it gives us an distraction that everything will be okay. Yeah, not just like to just sit there and just like think about the trouble time. 
think about like the things that you know but like i think ministering it just gives you a way of feeling joy during the trouble time right love and, that yeah. love that very good i mean these these we get these talks six, you know every six months for the purpose of what edifying helping us to protect us to force to help us to help us to not be troubled Tre what's the, what's the word treasure up the the word of god and that's the most that's the word of god the most important things to us right now for the next six months of our lives to to walk and to act and to to strive to adopt and incorporate into our lives so we can be prepared be deeper converted comment or did i see a hand up over here Oh, no, go ahead. Yeah. Well, yeah, just, or if there's another one, I mean, if there's, if you're wanting to get to one of the verses or a conference or whatever you're thinking. I, I read, uh, but, okay. Um, I just thought it's just really comforting that President Nelson promises us that we really can be peacemakers because it is such a dawn come past. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was really comforting. Yeah. It's not impossible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is it, is it, is it a process? Yes. You got to catch yourself. Yes. But, that's what repentance is for, right? This becomes a point of prayer and, and con to be conscious of it in our interactions. Yeah. 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 And hence, I think that's why it's good to interact with people that think it's, it's good to listen. I don't think you got to get on chat lines and just I bet you know what I bet I think just in your interactions you meet with you meet with it. I don't think we should shun away from it, but I think there's something cool about interacting with people and having people to be you know being understood and having understanding what you're doing. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. Very good. Anyone else? Any other? Oh, go ahead. Uh a hand. Right. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Well, well said. Thank you. Yeah, how they how they walk away from it, I think, is a is a that's the light. That's that's what brings that's what brings light to the gospel. What brings light to you know to that focuses on that brings people to Christ is when they see that kind of example. How many times have we heard this that you know your actions and your and your your words and your kindness made me want to know more about the Savior and how often that can happen for us. Good. Thank you. Anyone else? So different, give me a couple more off of that verse, off, off that list that you picked. Anyone pick? Which why? Which one? Yeah, go ahead. Which ones? Uh uh -huh. Yeah, so just 40, 46, yeah, 46 through 50. Go ahead. Well, yeah, or just sum it up however you want to do. Yeah. And what I say when I in the bottle, on the honor, watch their fourth, you know, not by what hour they would take off. Now, this, if the good man of the house hath known and not watched the thief would come, he would have watched. But not have sucked his house to have been broken up, but would have been ready. For me, y'all be ready for such hours as you may come, as coming may come. 
Who then is faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made rule over his house to give them meat and good season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he comes, shall find it, shall find so doing. And very last thing is, he shall make rule over all his goods. I think the, the, the blessing is exactly pointed at the end where, I mean, the servant will kind of do his job, you know, but I think it's for the Lord who will, you know, take what it is that we do and then we'll grant us. And the right. right. So that that's the that's the parable, right? Of the so does anyone know a good cross reference in Doctrine and Covenants to that to those verses? Yes, so this is this is the this is the servant, the, the thief in the night statement, right? If you'd have watched, you would have known you would have been prepared for when the so that, that's analogous to what? What's this symbolic of? Second coming, right? So, does anyone know a good cross reference to that in Doctrine and Covenants? Go there really quick. Doctrine and Covenants 106. I love these verses. Doctrine and Covenants 106, verse uh, 4, 5, 4, 5, 4, 5, and 6. Yeah. I can read it. Got it, just a second. 106, 4, 5, and 6. Yeah, go ahead. Who's got it? Who said that? Oh, got it. Very I say unto you, the coming of the Lord draweth nigh, and it taketh over the world as they sleep in the night. So there's the thief of the night. The Savior comes as a thief in the night, right? You're going. Therefore, gird up your lions. Loins. You, want, well, don't, you don't want to be girding up lions, let me tell you. That's dangerous. <laughs> Make sure the children of light, and that shade shall not overtake you as a thief. And again, I very say unto you that there was joy in heaven when my servant Warren bowed my scepter and separated himself from the craft of it. That's good. That's good. Yeah. So very good. So verse four and four and five, right? What's he saying? What does that mean? If you're prepared, then. It won't overtake you. Won't, you won't be caught off guard. You're not going to be, hey, we're, it's not going to surprise you when it when it happens, right? But there's a phrase that he says in there. It's kind of a cool phrase. What does he say? It shall not overtake you as the even because you are what? You are children of light. What does that phrase mean to you to be children of light? I think it's more like being children of God. What does it mean to be children of Okay, so children of God. Okay. I think it has to do with being like children in Christ because um when you're baptized, um, you're adopted in through baptism. And so and he's the light of the world, so children of light. Okay. But um, if you mean as far as what does it look like? Um, I think it, it goes back to what we were saying that it has to do with our choices. It's having that light within us, having that conversion, um, where we're, you know, we're looking towards him all the time and we're trying to come closer to him and helping others draw closer to him as well. And I spreading love it. his love. I love it. Good. Other okay. thought, yeah. Um also, being aware of what, being aware of the things that will be, that will be asked of us in the future, such as law of consecration and others, key, com key commandments that it, and temple covenants that we must be prepared to face. Uh -huh. Otherwise, we'll be caught off guard and be like, wait, hold on, where's that? Okay. Okay. Good, good, good. So do me a favor. Go to your topical guide. Find me a scripture about light that might help us understand what it means to be a child of light. Topical guide, something. something. To find me a verse about light. What does it help us to understand? Stenhouse, 
Go ahead. Uh huh. Yeah, it was the same. I love that. I love that. Children of light choose to stay in the in the light. They choose to stay in the day, not the the darkness. That's where they. That's where. That's where it can help. I love that. Very oh. good. Here then, to Becca. Go ahead. Ephesians five, verse eight uh -huh. says. For ye sometimes darkness, but now ye are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Why do you like it? Because I think it's more, well, it says walking in children of light. That means we're drawing closer to Christ. Oh, I love that. And I think it's more, also, it's for all the covenant path. Ah, very good. Love it. Becca. Um, I really liked <clears throat> Doctrine and Covenants 9340, which says, but I have commanded you to bring up your children in light and truth. Um, and I like that one just because it kind of makes the comparison of light to truth and how um, light can be, you know, there's the word enlightenment for people coming to know truth, yeah. basically. Light is truth, right? Exactly. Light is truth, yes. And so I just thought that was cool to be children of light to be children of truth uh -huh. to help others see the truth as well love it love it very good love it love it love it anyone yes yeah i i saw in psalm um 119 Ooh. verse 105 it says the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path uh -huh. and it just reminded me of like going outside when it's like really dark and like finally like turning on a flashlight uh -huh. and that like makes such a difference i remember at like girls camp i'd be like i don't need a flashlight uh -huh. i want it and then I would go and be like, I can't see anything. And then there'd be like one girl that's like, oh, I have a flashlight. And it would make the world a difference. All right. So it's like, oh, you guys are talking about truth. It's just like, it's uncovering something uh, that you never. I love it. I love it. Remember the old show? I don't know if you remember the old show, the I Lamp to My Feet, about the grandfather that takes his, it's a father that takes his wayward son out to the desert to rattlesnakes. And he, int and he intentionally leaves his water bottle empty of water. They get all the way out there, and you guys remember that show? <laughs> it's really good. He's teaching his son about <laughs> he needs to go find water, and <laughs> he got this flashlight. Right, that's the only way that he can find his, you know, to save his father's life. It's a little extreme. We would never do that, right? It's a movie, but it's really good. This 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 kid happened to use his light to find his path to save his is pretty cool. Anyway, that was the whole theme was his father's yeah. land. The, this light is a lamp into your feet. The analogy. So yeah, I love that. Thank you. Good. Any other any other thoughts on it? Yes. Um, um in the Book of Mormon, um, it talks about when the Mona was converted. Uh -huh. It says uh, light, which uh, lighted up up Lamoni's mind. Wait, light which light up Lamona's mind is light of God's glory, marvelous light of His goodness. Yeah. Um, and then I just like that because it just shows lays God's glory. Yeah. Well, and it it light it enlightens the lightens the mind. It's it helps us to see it clarifies. I love that. Good. 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 Yeah. Which one is it? 
Uh, it's probably four to eight weeks. Oh, yeah, good. This is the past with us that we've been trying to like the sign is normal on the first day. The way the wicked is in Starkman, they know not how to read a place on. Uh-huh. I think that's cool because when, like, I put uh, and I'm um, two, two, but I'm um, sorry. What? He's quoting it. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, like she's talking about light, darkness, uh-huh. when you're trying to talk. Um, I think this one is cool, and it talks about how it's the path of the justice is not only a shining light, but it, it shines more and more. Like as you're approaching a light, uh-huh. how it can be brighter. Uh-huh. I think it's interesting when it's chosen of light that is a dark experience. If we approach the light, it, it grows in abundance. Uh-huh. Right? Whereas the common, the common. Uh, the wicked, and it's not only that they're in darkness, but which could imply that they're just you know, bad people. But I, I like how it phrases uh, the way the wicked is in darkness, they know not what they stumble, right? Through. Where it's not as if it kind of said earlier, there's very few actually bad people, it's mostly just people who just they don't know, they're tripping and falling, and they can't see. right? Yeah, so hold that thought now. I love this one here. This is by by President. This is, I think, he at 2013, he might have been president of the of the 70. One of the seven presidents of 70 and in 13. This was from a BYU talk to give, and I love this talk. It's, ta- it's talking about children of light. But let's read this one here. Just what's something that he says that just kind of stands out or, or kind of enhances what we've what we've learned in these verses and, and what the Savior is teaching here about being children of light. Who wants to read this one out loud for us? Got it. Here we go. We have been given the light of the gospel through the atonement of Jesus Christ. We know what God expects from us, <laughs> his beloved children. We have his spirit to guide us and direct us. To become children of light means to reject the power of the adversary and to choose daily to follow the light of Christ. The phrase children of light describes the people in whom the light of the gospel shines brightly. It describes the people who seek the light and are drawn to that which is virtuous, clean, and pure. There is an expectation that children of light are alert and watchful, not sleeping in the spirit of sense when they should be awake. Children of light do not sit passively in darkness. They have the courage to stand up and stand out. When the adversary comes looming, children of light know when to fight back, when to say no, and when to simply walk away. Oh, very good. Anything, yeah. <laughs> As we were reading this, I was just thinking about like the end uh, that we have the eights. Yeah. It says like we're we have the choice to and uh, be able to like stand up for ourselves and be able to. Be closer to Christ by being well, it's more like we're trying to be the more freedom we get is by choosing to be right. Right. And that's why you know being a child of light is all about using our is choosing yes. to be Choose right. one way over another, right? Yes. It this is all about being children of light. It's choosing to it's just not going with flow, it's just not drifting, but it is. It's choosing to stand against the wind, stand against the current to do what Christ would do. I love this. Very good. Any other thoughts in there? There's one that I think kind of stands out to me. We have been given the lies of the gospel through what? Through the atonement of Christ, right? Man, I think that is a significant one. Of for us to do what we need to do to be children of light, it can only happen through the enabling power of Christ, through the atonement of Christ, is is how that comes about. We cannot do this divorced from the atonement of Christ and, and our need for need for him to help us in this. It has to be married to that. Hence, President Nelson's always constant, always constant. What was the last thing he said to us at General Conference? I invite you to learn of Christ, learn of his love, learn of his mercy, learn of his grace. Seek him. What was the last name? Follow him. It's It all centers on following Christ and, and striving to become like him. Anything else in there? Online, anybody? 
Our time is up. Dang it. But also, I'm sure yeah, it says like they they haven't heard to stand up, stand out. And then the university comes looming, the children like you know what's to fight back. Yeah. I really like how it says we actually know what's best when it's time to fight back. To get back on a covenant path. Yes. Actually, like that. Yeah, that's fighting our demons to get back, right? Yeah. This isn't fighting, right? This is fighting. Listen, this is like overcoming our obstacles that prevent us from being one well with Christ, following Christ, acting like Christ. I love that. Good job. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You guys are awesome. I, man, I hope something. I hope you walk out of here with something in terms of I don't know what the what the Spirit tells you or how you walk away with it, but hopefully there's something that you walk out of here and you go, "This is." Here's what here's what God would have me do to be a child to be a child of light to exempt to be an example of that. And uh, listen, it's a process, right? We we work on it, and it takes it takes it's a process of overcoming it and uh, to do it. Good job, guys. Thank you, Abby. You want to give closing prayer? Absolutely. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. We thank thee for this day, and we thank thee for this opportunity we have had to gather together. And thank you for helping us to have learned so many things. And please help these things to enter into our hearts. And please help us to know how to move forward with this knowledge and understanding that we have gained. And please help the spirit to be with us. Um, and please help everyone to stay safe tonight. And thank you for this lesson that was prepared for us. And please help us as we strive to be um, children of light. And we say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thanks for the lesson. Hey, thank you, Abby and Carissa and... Uh, Mahela, thank you. Luke, we lost Luke. Does anyone know who Luke is? Yeah, Luke's uh, one of our Oh, oh yes. What's his last name? Luke Edwards. Has Edwards. he been here before? What's his last name? Edwards. Edwards? He, he lives in Santa Cruz. He's two fifty. No, no, no. So, so he lives where? Oh, so what is he? So, has he said anything about Institute over there? So apparently it's really small. Yeah, it is so right. I, told him, I just sent him the Zoom and said, hey, hop on with us. And so yeah. he did. Good job. Yeah, their institute struggles over there. Yeah.